Welcome to this rapid revision video looking at exam skills. This will be for the Pearson Edexcel Paper 1. The topic we'll be focusing on will be medicine through time, specifically the British sector of the Western Front 1914 to 1918, which is the source inquiry. This will be looking at question 2b, the source interrogation question. If you're not sure what I'm on about, stay tuned and I'll explain it. It's only worth four marks, but this is a question that trips up a lot of students. But it needn't be the case. Once you learn the techniques, it's pretty easy to get right. So let's get into it. Firstly, a word or two about the Pearson Edexcel Paper 1. It has two main components. The historic environment or source inquiry. In this case, we're going to be looking at the British sector of the Western Front, 1914 to 1918, injuries, treatment and the trenches. And the thematic study, e.g. medicine in Britain circa 1250 to the present. If you're not doing these topics, the skills involved with this might still be useful, so stay tuned and see if it helps. The question itself is going to be quite a short one, but you'll have an hour and 15 minutes for the whole exam. So this will only be a small amount of the exam, so don't spend too long on it. You will, however, need the sources booklet, which should have been given to you. If it's missing, make sure that you ask the invigilators to give you one. Remember that the hour and 15 minutes is for both sections of the exam, so manage your time carefully. Let's have a look at the question. Here it is. Now, this question is a bit of a weird one. You'll be most used to answering questions rather than having to ask them yourself as part of your response. But let's break this down and see what you have to do. Firstly, you've got to make sure you're using the right source. This will be related to source A. This question is assessing your source analysis skills or assessment objective three and should take you about six minutes to do. Although again, you will have to write very little for this. So as long as your thinking is clear, you'll probably save a bit of time. You'll need to identify details within the source that you could follow up. It does not matter if the question that you ask, you know the answer to or not. It really doesn't. You could just as easily ask a question that you've got no idea what it is. And you could just as easily ask a question which you know exactly the answer to. The examiner will never know and it just doesn't matter. In your answer, you must give the question that you would ask of the type of source that you could use. Again, be careful with the choice of source. And bear in mind, it's only worth four marks. So definitely don't spend too long on this. You will need to ensure that you use the correct source. In this case, that's source A. How could you follow up source A to find out more? Well, what are you meant to be finding out more about? Well, just like in the previous question, the eight mark uh, usefulness question, you've got to make sure that you're following up the right inquiry. In this case, the inquiry is the work of the stretcher bearers on the Western Front. The source you identify should be suitable to follow this up. And to do that, it should be a contemporary or primary source and one that might contain the information that you need. Though you won't need to prove this, it just needs to be a sensible choice. This is one that you can easily get wrong. So we're going to start off by looking at some common mistakes before I show you how it should be done. Here's source A, a reminder. If you've not studied this source already, then I'm going to read it to you now. But bear in mind, in the real exam, you'll have already studied this source for question 2A. So you'll probably have some annotations around the outside of it anyway. The top part of where you answer the question is in a little table like this. We're going to look at the first part of this. It's split into four and where it says detail in source A that I would follow up. Well, before we can do that, we need to have a look at the source itself. This is from a letter written by a captain in the Royal Army Medical Corps to his family in 1915. He was in charge of a group of stretcher bearers. Here he is describing the work of his group of stretcher bearers after a German attack on the British trenches. At 2 a.m. a terrifying bombardment began and at 5 a.m. the first batch of wounded began coming down the communication trench. It was evening by the time I got out of the trench to look for more wounded. I went off with another man in search of the wounded. We found most of them in a wooded area, so weak that they could not call out. We were so relieved at being, they were so relieved at being found that I led a search for more wounded. It was awful work getting them out of the shell holes. It was also hard to find enough men to carry them away because the stretcher bearers were so exhausted. Finally, we got our last wounded to safety at 4 a.m. in the next morning. Altogether, we had collected 18 men in a single day and we were certain that no one was left behind. So let's identify a detail in source A that I could follow up. I'll highlight one here. What shall I go for? All right, let's go for this detail here. We collected 18 men in a single day. So I'd write detail in the source A that I would follow up. We collected 18 men in a single day. If that's a relevant detail. I'd get a mark for that. Good news so far. However, if I'd written this, a letter written by a captain of the Royal Army Medical Corps, 
I would not get a mark. That is not a detail from the source, that is a detail from the provenance. So make sure you don't make that very common howler. Now let's have a look at the second section in the table. Question I would ask. Reminder, you don't need to know the answer to the question that you ask. Was this an above average number for a stretcher bearer to carry in a day? Remember, our detail was about the 18 men rescued. That'll get me a mark. It's a relevant question and it is related to the work of stretcher bearers on the Western Front. What about this one then? Which battle were they taking part on in? Well, that might be nice to know, but it's not anything to do with the work of stretcher bearers on the Western Front, so I wouldn't get a mark for that. Make sure that your question is related to the inquiry that has been stated. For the next question in this section, you'll need to consider which source you could use to find out more. Now, this is a little diagram that demonstrates all surviving evidence of the past. We have written sources, which broadly can be split between private sources, official or government sources, and unofficial sources. We have oral or spoken sources, interviews, that sort of thing. And we have other non-written sources. Again, these can be very broadly divided into archeology, span stuff that you dig up, landscape, stuff that you can see around you, buildings, and artifacts. Let's consider these different types of sources from the Western Front. You could do this as a task of your own. If you wanted to, you could pause the video here and then note down for each of the bullet points which type of source it is. We'll do the first one together. Let's consider people's diaries first of all. So a diary, well that'll be a written source, but is it private, official or unofficial? Well if it's just an ordinary person's diary, they wouldn't be expecting anyone to read it, it would be private. So we would say for that one there, 1A, that would be a written source and private. All right, you can pause the video here if you want to have a go at that. If not, we'll proceed and look at the different types. Pieces of bomb shrapnel are non-written sources and they're artifacts. However, the diary of a government minister would be written and you might expect it to be private. But in truth, government ministers kind of expect their stuff to be read after they die. So it's more of an official source. It'll be giving the government side of things. A photo of stretcher bearers, though, is a type of artifact and it's non-written. Newspaper reports are probably unofficial, but do remember that these written sources might be subject to censorship in wartime. The Royal Army Medical Corps records, though, would be written sources that are official. A restored trench system, on the other hand, might be an example of non-written sources that are landscape. An unrestored one would probably be archaeology. Records of government meetings would be written sources that are official. Speaking to an eyewitness would be an oral or spoken source, and also pretty unlikely given that the First World War happened well over 100 years ago. Excavating a World War I medical kit might be non-written sources, archaeology, because it's an excavation, or it might be the artefact that you find. A Royal Army Medical Corps training manual, of which I happen to own a copy, would be a written source that is official. A map of hospital locations would be a non-written source and probably an artefact, but you might consider it a landscape as well if you are using it in conjunction with what you can see around you. A TV interview with a World War I soldier would be an oral or spoken source and one that would still survive to this day. And a former base hospital? Well, then we're talking about a building. So now we've had a look at the different types of sources that you might be able to choose from, you could note down some of these and see if we could fit them in with the question that we're looking at. Naturally, we've just spent some time looking at typical sources that you could use for this section, but this will need to be pretty well automatic by the time you get into the exam or it's going to take you all day. So the third section is what type of source I could use to find out about the question that you'd asked previously. Now, the question I asked previously, which you've probably forgotten by now because I almost had myself, was, was this an above average number for, uh, of men to be carried out by the stretcher bearers? So in order to find the answer, I would use the Royal Army Medical Corps records for soldiers recovered in a battle. Why? Because let's face it, it'd probably have that information in it. That's a relevant, sensible source. It would get me the mark. What about this? A website. Well, it might contain the information, but it's not a contemporary source and it's definitely not very specific. I wouldn't get the mark for that. So make sure that your, your sources are specific, they're contemporary or, or from the time, and they would realistically contain the details that you're actually looking for. After that, there's only one section left, and that's explaining why your chosen source would work. So let's have a look at it, the last section. How might this help answer my question? Well, I think the Royal Army Medical Corps records would help because of this. 
These records would show how many soldiers were brought back in the next stages of the evacuation chain. chain. And so you'd be able to see whether it was an above average number or not. That would get me the mark. This wouldn't though. It would contain the information. Well, lovely stuff, but the examiner is going to demand that you're a bit more specific than that. So make sure that you are. You wouldn't get a mark for just saying it would contain the information. Although this style of question can take a little while to get your head around, you've got tremendous flexibility about how you do it, and that can be a useful thing. You can pick most details in here and make it relevant, choose a question that suits the inquiry, and choose a suitable source. And then, as long as you can explain why you've chosen it, you'll probably get all four marks. So let's choose an entirely different detail and see if I can get a decent answer out of that. Let's choose this detail here. So here is the table in full, all four sections of it. What am I going to write down? Detail in source A that I would follow up. It was hard to find enough men to carry them away. OK, get a mark for that because that is a relevant detail to the work of the stretcher bearers. Question I would ask, how many men were typically needed to carry a stretcher? I get a, question, uh, a mark for that because actually that's relevant to the work of stretcher bearers. The type of source I could use, a photograph of stretcher bearers um, taken during a World War I battle. Well, that would be relevant and it would give me the information. Why? How might this help me answer my question? The photograph would show how many men were carrying each stretcher. And indeed, I've even got a specific photograph in mind that I might use, and you may well have seen it too. The photograph I had in mind, which you may have seen, is this one here. It was taken in 1917 during the Battle of Passchendaele, otherwise known as the Third Battle of Ypres. It would be pretty useful, wouldn't it, for answering my question? You can see there are lots of men trying to, str uh, to struggle to carry this stretcher, but maybe this is an above average number. The point I'm actually trying to make, though, is do you need to have a particular source in mind when you choose it? The answer you'll be glad to know is absolutely not. I just thought this was a nice detail to include. Anyway, on to another example. So which detail am I going to choose this time? A terrifying bombardment began. Now, I'm going to have to be careful here. If the question I would ask does not relate to the work of the stretcher bearers, I'm not going to get a mark for that because it doesn't look really related to the work of the stretcher bearers on its own. So if I ask the question, were World War I battles dangerous, I'm not going to get a mark. That's not about the work of the stretcher bearers. But let's give ourselves the benefit of the doubt for now. Question I would ask, did stretcher bearers have to work under enemy fire? OK, good. That's definitely about the work of the stretcher bearers. So I get a mark for that and I'll definitely ensure that I get the mark for the first bit as well type of source I could use. Records of soldiers admitted to a casualty clearing station. Hmm. OK, on its own, that might not seem like it's particularly about stretcher bearers, so I'm going to have to explain why it would be. But again, let's give myself the benefit of the doubt. These records might show if Royal Army Medical Corps stretcher bearers were being wounded in the course of their duties. And that would certainly answer my question about did stretcher bearers have to work under enemy fire. If they did, then it makes sense that there are lots of them are going to get wounded. And I can tell you from my own knowledge, Sadly, they were. Very brave men. Some final points then. Four mark source interrogation questions can seem weird compared to what you're used to, but they should be easy marks if you remember a few simple rules. You'll need to ensure that you choose the correct source. You'll need to relate your follow up question to the state of inquiry. The source you identify as suitable to follow this up should be a contemporary or primary source, and one that might contain the information that you need. Though you won't need to prove this, it just needs to be a sensible choice. You should then explain why your chosen source would contain the specific information needed to answer your stated question. And maybe you don't need to choose a really specific question like a particular photograph you're thinking of. You can be a bit more general than that, but be specific about the type of source that you're going to use and why that would, that would include what you need. So without further ado, that's the end of this rapid revision video. I hope it's been helpful uh, to you because let's face it, a lot of students do find this particular question quite tricky, but it's only four marks. Don't spend too long on it. Do a bit of practice. You'll be absolutely fine. Thanks for watching. If that's been useful, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. I'll be back with more rapid revision soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.